had this idea to take a picture of the jet ski going off the wave behind the boat, um, but I wanted to get a shot of the boat in the photo. So, uh, the first thing that we had to do was figure out what lens we were going to use and where we wanted the camera position. We're using the 15mm fisheye. This is a Sigma one on a 5D Mark IV. And then I have a radio popper on it. I taped it on with gaffer's tape just because there's no locking mechanism. It just has that small little pin which can come out pretty easily, especially since we had the camera mounted upside down. So we taped that on. And then um, I couldn't really adjust my settings until we got on the lake. So we. So once we got on the lake, I was able to reach the camera w from the jet ski and we set the settings. We, I did a manual focus, so we focused on, I had someone stand on the back, and I focused on there because I figured the jet ski would be close enough to that. And then, so once it's focused, flip it over to manual focus. If you're taking pictures at night with lights, you want to make sure that your shutter speed is not faster than one two hundredths of a second, otherwise they'll conflict with your lights. Um, but before you even turn on any of your lights, you want to make sure that the background of your scene is properly exposed. So you're going to adjust your camera settings and make sure that the sunset and the water and everything that's not going to be hit by your lights looks correct, looks the correct exposure. Um, so it's actually going to make the scene appear to be pretty dark because your subject is not going to be lit at all. So when you first set your camera, so my settings were at 5.6, uh, 160 ISO and 160 of a second and those settings were strictly set for the sunset. Then I turned on one light at a time where you um, paint the scene with your off-camera lighting but you do it one light at a time so that way you know exactly which light is, is creating which shadowing and all that stuff. So turn on your first light, take a test shot. If the light's too bright, turn down the light. Keep adjusting the light power with the same settings from your camera until that flash looks like it's giving off the correct exposure on your subject. Then turn that light off, go to the next flash, turn on that flash and do the same thing for as many flashes that you have. Once you have all the cameras or all the lights set to the proper exposure, um, then all of the, all your lighting is going to look correct. Uh, this is why I also recommend using um, radio poppers because they have the ability to adjust your power level of your flash directly from your camera, from the transmitter on your camera. I use both the Radio Popper JRX series and I also use the Radio Popper JR2 series. The JR2 series uses AA batteries and for some reason they seem like they die like all the time, whereas the JRX series used this weird, kind of like a fat, little short stubby, it, it's it's thicker than, I don't, I don't remember when it was. Anyway, those batteries lasted forever. I'd stick one in and it would last, you know, for 20 photo shoots before I had to change it. The thing I'm getting at is if you have to walk back and forth to your flash every single time you need to adjust the power level, it's going to be a real pain in the butt, especially since um, I was on the jet ski. So I was able to just adjust the power settings of my flashes directly from the camera and see the result immediately. Okay, so at first we started just mounting these bars to the tower, to the wakeboard tower, and then when we held the camera up to where the bar would be, we didn't really like the position, so then we realized that if we held the camera where we wanted it to be, then we needed to just figure out how to get a bar, a bar to that location. So we ended up mounting this so I pretty much just turned on live view and then positioned the camera because with fisheye everything's extremely warped on a full frame camera so up here it looks completely different than just right here so we ended up doing it about here so we had to figure out how to get a bar to here so this pole that we attached right here is just a, a, C, stand, a C stand pole uh, just with the base removed and that way we have the ability to expand it out farther so that way when we were driving down we were able to pull it in a little bit this one doesn't 
extract, but we didn't have that big of a deal. Okay, so once this was expanded, um, if we mounted the camera here, it was too high. So I used a uh, magic arm. So to mount this camera, we used a magic arm, which is pretty much just a, uh, it's like a, it has a ball head up here, a ball head down here, a swivel point, but uh, the magic part of it is that the entire everything tightens with one knob so you can mount this and this is just a super clamp so we just stuck the super clamp on tighten that up make sure that the safety pin is set so that way the lever can't accidentally open that'll prevent that from falling off and all these have safety pins so even the super clamp eh, even if I unscrew this, there's a safety pin that has to be pushed before it'll come out. So even if this ends up getting loose, which it ended up doing just from the boat vibration, there's no way for it to come out. So you want to make sure that you have some type of like fail safe. Anyway, with the super clamp, it's nice because, or not super clamp, a uh, magic arm, you can position the camera wherever you want it. And then as soon as you find your spot, you just tighten this and it'll stay. So I just, because I'm working with the camera upside down, because I wanted this to be just vertical as much as possible, so we were trying to get this camera positioned. So it was about like that, and then you just tighten this all the way down. And this is variable friction, so you need to keep tightening it all the way. The, the less you tighten it, the more you can move it. Which is nice, because if you want to be able to move it a little bit, you just don't tighten it as much, and you can still kind of adjust it. Okay, so then once that was mounted, um, we were triggering this camera just with a Canon RC1 remote, which is just the built-in infrared. So on the drive mode on the camera, I had to set it to um, the timer one, where if you hit the shutter button, it would do like a 10-second timer. But with the remote, it takes the picture immediately. Um, okay, so that's how that camera was set up. And it was kind of bouncing around, you know, kind of scary, but it worked. Now on this one, this is just another pole. Uh, this pole is for a boom arm that we have. And we mounted it. Here, uh, we'll go back to this one. So the way that we mounted this one, we have a super clamp up here that's mounted to the wakeboard tower. And then there's a metal stud that's in between here um, that connects this super clamp to this super clamp. Okay, so we mounted one to there, and then we had another super clamp attached to the pole. And then we did the same thing over here, super clamp to the tower and then a super clamp to the pole. Um, by the time it got over here it started getting a little loose and wobbly so we first added this friction arm and that just hooked to the Bimini and then to this tower and that helped a little bit and then we ended up having this left over. It's another magic arm. Um, so I just grabbed another super clamp, attached it to the tower, another super clamp to there and that just kind of gave it a little bit more support. For lighting um, I knew that I wanted the sun behind me, so we were waiting to sunset. Um, and then I knew that I had to light myself up on the jet ski, so we mounted Alien B. This is a B800. Now these ones don't have fail safes in them, so that's kind of scary. So if this thing loosened up, the light could fall. So to be safe, you could probably get like zip ties and zip, you know, you, those big zip ties and zip tie like from here to like here just so if it did fall your equipment doesn't fall we didn't do that on this one I wanted to leave the reflector on uh, with the reflector off it, it, it's kind of like putting your flash in bulb mode so when you here come look at the bulb so bulb mode is kind of like if you just take a, a a light bulb and it glows in every direction so this would light up everything from the entire underside of here. It would light up the floor. It would light up this way, um, which is a good effect if you're trying to light up like the inside of a car. But we weren't, for this light, it was meant to hit the jet ski, so we left this dome on, which then helps direct the inside silver. It just helps direct the light. And then when I set this up, I just loosened up the, the mount and then the swiveled Part, and then I aimed it to where I knew that the jet ski 
would be. You want that aiming right towards the person. So I, to aim it, I usually stand behind the light and just kind of look in the same direction, okay? And then we have a radio popper on this one to trigger it, and we had a power cord coming off of it. And you know, all these wires coming down, I had to edit them out of the final photo. It's easier to edit a straight line than to take it and wrap it around the pole because then I'd have wires wrapping around the pole that I'd have to edit out and I didn't want to do that. Um, and then we have the lights going into a Vagabond Mini Lithium. This is from Policy Buff. It has two power outputs. And uh, I, know, I mean, I've shot off four lights before at a time on this thing. Um, this one was at full power because the light needed to travel a lot farther. So I had this light at full power. And then we, um, because the camera was able to get the entire boat and the jet skier in it, I wanted to light up the boat too. So that's why this pole extends out. So this is another Alien BB-800. Now on this, because this is a boom, it already has the ability to stick these mill studs in. I can either have it sticking out this direction, up or down. These mounts on the Alien BB-800s are plastic. And if you don't have, if you mount it like this, where all the downforce of the light is putting pressure on the plastic, they'll start cracking. I've broken two of these before and Paul C. Buff sent me two new ones for free. Paul C. Buff is the guy who makes Alien Beast. Now, whenever I mount these, I want to make sure to always have the downward pressure. So instead of mounting it like this, I always try to mount it like this or like this. Don't ever try to do it sideways because it puts too much pressure on these things. So I moved this stud that used to be going out this way, I moved it to down here. And then we added here. And with this one, I'm trying to get the boat. So if I would have left this diffuser on it, or this uh, reflector, it would have pretty much shot a beam of light just to right here. So because I wanted to try to light up the whole boat, I removed that and we just tossed this in the boat. So while we were driving, because we drove with all this stuff attached to the car, I left it on. <clears throat> the advantage of doing the bulb mode in this mode also is it lit up all the water as well. And I didn't really realize that would have created a cool effect, but in the photo it made it so the, the water's like glowing green. And that was all from this bulb. So this bulb, because it's exposed, got the entire the back of the boat, the front, the side, it lit up Shanda's face. And it also helped create, this one was a lot lower power, but it helped create um, some fill shadows on the jet ski because that light over there would have created some harsh shadows. So this one, light coming from this direction would have helped fill those shadows. Um, for the power on this one, we just kind of wrapped it around the pole so it wouldn't be dangling. Uh, another radio popper in here. And then because I had this pole over here, I didn't know if this shot was going to work, so we also hooked up a camera over here. I was trying to get them to be hooked up so one wireless trigger would trigger both cameras and then in turn trigger both lights, but I was having very inconsistency problems. I was able to do it with, you know, and that's when you use like um, the receiver of a radio popper it plugged into the remote port and then if you trigger your lights so if I trigger the light on one camera it sends a signal to the light and the camera to then trigger but it was being very inconsistent so I just decided to let this camera have no lights so this one was so the settings on this camera were a lot different than the settings on that camera um, to mount this one Again, we were running out of super clamps, so I had to kind of make do with what we had. I used a tripod mount, like a ball head, Manfrotto ball head. That way, once I had it mounted, I could just move it to wherever I wanted. We ended up doing a portrait one on the back. And then I had this really nice adapter. Okay, so this is a male stud to tripod attachment. That gives me the ability to use a light stand adapter and use uh, tripod heads. So that worked really good for that one. And then on these uh, super clamps, 
they just go in like that. You have to push in the fail safe. Uh, when you use these super clamps, it's a good idea to use the studs that are squared off like this on the edges, and that prevents it from rotating. So once they're in there, they they it doesn't even matter if you if you don't if you don't tighten this all the way, it can't rotate. It's physically impossible. Uh, there's other male studs that we use that are just round, and I could stick that in there. And if this is not totally tightened down, I could still crank it and and swivel it. So those ones are better for super clamps. And then I just attached that one to the bottom of this uh, Manfrotto ball head, which we have a bunch of those ones, so I just grabbed it off of something. And then once it's mounted there, we attached it to here. Okay, and then I uh, angled it so I could get kind of the back of the boat and where I thought the jet ski would be. And then I just tightened it up. Oh, another thing I had to do on both these cameras is I set the auto uh, auto turn off to disable because I usually have all my cameras set to automatically turn off after one minute of not use. But then we started noticing that with the remotes, the remote stopped working because you had to turn back on the camera. Okay, so then for the this camera that we're using, we had recording video, and I just stuck it on this tripod. I uh, spread the legs out all the way. And that way, I was able to slide it into here. And then we had this set up like that. And we had the camera right here filming, kind of like behind the scenes. Um, the advantage of doing it like this with the really wide legs is when we were going, we purposely kept the trim on our boat up. So that way the, the boat was like very vertical in the air, like the nose was just really high. Well, that made it so this camera still had stabilization. If we would have used just a regular tripod, it would have tipped over at that level, but because we were so high up in there and because these legs were spread out, it worked just fine. And then we also brought a drone out, so after we got um, the shots that we knew would work, then I pulled the drone out and did some drone shots. I didn't want to do the drone first because if we had problems with the drone, I didn't want it to affect anything with the photo shoot so I made sure to get the photo first and then we pulled the drone out did some shots and then and then took some more pictures okay now we gotta take it all down over and out from Clint Decker time to say goodbye and then you can see from here Strider is over here in the back triggering so he actually has two triggers we didn't really get that many good shots from that one in fact you can see them so I'm sure there's some good pictures but you know without the lighting you know um, the picture just doesn't have the same feel. Let me apply my previous setting and see if it does anything. And the picture disappeared. Oh, there it is. Okay, it looks just bright. Let's open it up and bridge. ACR. Then let's see if we can get this to come out any better. I mean, yeah, you can make a goal. And the flash usually, uh, you know, makes makes your subject still so because I was moving uh, and it's, it's it's not even in focus so it's yeah we didn't use any of these ones some of my favorite ones from the shoot so like here's one right here there was Strider and Chanda in the boat afterwards here was me on the way home. That was me playing around in the wake after we were heading back. And that's when the water was all still when we were adjusting some settings. There's another one. There's another one. If you're interested in any of the gear that we used for this entire photo shoot, I put links to everything in the description. Uh, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.